Alright ladies and gentlemen, the countdown has begun. I am Jorasar and this game is going to be Naniwa versus Genius. The map is ESB Ohana Naniwa taking game number one in beautiful fashion. But this is now going to be game number two. Let's see if Genius can pull one back and take this series to an ace match. Or if Naniwa is going to be able to take the series 2-2-0. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here we go. The map is ESV Ohana. And spawning in the top left position of the map. We have none other than the GSL Foreigner Hope. Ladies and gentlemen, flying in from Korea and the homegrown talent from Sweden, it's going to be Quantic Naniwa. And over here in the bottom right corner of the map, spawning as the blue Protoss with what I've just noticed as what looks like a cute porcupine as his logo. <laughs> we also have GSL Runner Up. He has proved himself time and time again. His resurgence in PvP. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be MYM MVP Genius. And now I see that's actually a fish. But if only it was a cute porcupine, that would have been so much better. Never mind. Guys, both of these players at such high level PvP. That last game was ridiculous. We saw Naniwa play so patiently. Uh, waiting until he thought he had an absolute advantage before engaging with Genius's army, just picking off one or two units at the front and then pulling back each time, trying to split Genius two ways until Genius made a mistake. He misrallied those two Colossi out to the front of his army by accident, and Naniwa took full advantage of that. He picked off those two Colossi, felt he had an advantage, started morphing in Archons all over the place, just getting a superior uh, tank to his opponent's army, and then moving in with superior colossi uh, numbers. Now, he had plus three a lot later than his opponent, but, as I mentioned before, that plus three only counts if Genius did a timing with it, and he didn't, and that allowed Naniwa to sit back in a defensive position and hold on to his plus two until he was absolutely certain he would be okay with that plus three as well, and that is when Naniwa decided to engage. So very well played by both players, in supremely patient play from Naniwa, and able to take game number one against the Korean Master Protoss here. GM Genius, but will Genius be able to take game number two? This guy has proven his caliber in Code S already. Will he be able to do it one more time? We're going to have to wait and see. Neither player scouting the other yet. Uh, a very, very cagey affair this at the moment. We see no scouts being put out across the map. This is the map, of course, yesterday where Naniwa hid a pylon in his opponent's base right up here and managed to win with a 4-gate, but it doesn't look like he's going to be trying anything like that against MVP Genius. Look at that. The first Zealot immediately scouting everywhere in the base. He knows exactly what all the tricks are, and uh, he is going to be completely fine against any early shenanigans from Naniwa being so diligent. Naniwa now going to be moving out across the map with this scouting pro, but first going to be scouting or possibly placing a forward pylon down by the cliff here, is he? Okay, a forward pylon's possible at this cliff, so he can warp units down on the low ground, but it looks like he is just scouting for Genius's pylon instead. Both of these guys so diligent with their scouting, it is beautiful to watch. First Zealot now, going to be taking the Watchtower for Naniwa just to make sure that no units are popping across to his half of the map. And in the meantime, Genius is going to be positioning his Zealot at the top of his ramp into his natural. The Stalker also joins him, and both sides are just going to be chilling out for now. But Naniwa has an additional three gateways incoming, guys. It looks like Naniwa wants to try and close out this series with a four gate. This is definitely not something you would expect on this map because Genius could just retreat into his base and hopefully if he has a sentry, it's just a single force field at the ramp to hold it off and Naniwa is going to be in an inferior position economically. But will he be able to take it out? I don't know. All the shields on that stalker immediately getting whittled down. Excellent play there from Genius as well as the Zealot. So Naniwa is not going to be able to get an early scout out and I don't know if this four gate is going to work but Naniwa it looks like he is going to be trying for it anyway. A nice pylon there means that if Naniwa gets a single unit up into the base of Genius, he will be able uh, to launch a force field on the high ground there. And it looks like the sentry has seen the pylon now. He knows what Naniwa is trying to do. And Genius is going to be able to take a defensive position. Let's take a look. It is 20 to 26 probes in favor of Genius as it currently stands. Oh no! The probe gets taken down and the force field goes down. This is absolutely huge for MVP Genius. 
all of a sudden, Naniwa unable to continue the aggression with that probe. No more pylons are going to be able to be warped in, and it looks like he's going to try again, but another force field stopping him from coming up, and the longer this goes on, the worse it's going to be for Naniwa. He is down 22 to 27 probes right now. Genius knows that this pylon is there, and he is going to be taking that out as well, which means Naniwa has no way to reinforce, and ooh, that was so close on that third force field, but Genius managing to pull it off. Naniwa even supply blocked, thanks to the loss of that forward pylon now, and Genius looks like he's going to be able to hold. Does he have another force field in the bag? Yes, I think he does on that sentry back there, but he is trying to goad Naniwa up and split the army now. He knows that there is no forward pylon for Naniwa. So he is not too worried about letting some of the stalkers come up and then splitting the army and trying to take those apart. And Naniwa knows this. He is going to fall back. He has at least expanded behind this instead of getting another round of warp ins, which is a great move to try and get back ahead in this game. But Genius now definitely having a bit of an advantage there. Those three sentries are going to be so useful with those force fields if he decides to move out. Genius also taking his expansion as well. Naniwa's a little bit earlier. Uh, that's going to mean Naniwa will be able to replenish his probe count and try and catch up with Genius. But Genius, of course, has been mining with more probes for longer. So small advantage to Genius. Very, very well held four gate there from Naniwa. Excellent play coming out from both sides. And uh, I really like the consolidation move. Naniwa immediately recognizing that it might not work and going straight into... F uh, going straight into an expansion. And we've actually got a Twilight Council and Blink coming down from Naniwa as some probes getting transferred to the natural now while it completes. So we will be seeing a little bit of Forgate Blink pressure on top of this as well. More Stalkers being warped in at the forward pylon on the right-hand side. Meanwhile, what do we have going down for Genius? It looks like a three-gate Robo. Nice, safe, and solid. But... He also is going to be getting that blink, and in fact, both sides have blink effectively at exactly the same time. So we could be seeing some ridiculous blink micro here from both of these players, some of the best Protoss players in the world, of course. And that could be incredibly interesting indeed. For now, though, Naniwa just going to be camping out in the middle of the map, holding that offensive watchtower and sending in a stalker just to do a little bit of scouting at the natural expansion. And he sees that the Nexus is also up for Genius, so he's not going to be able to get an economic advantage too early from that because Genius also has two Nexi from which he can chrono boost probes. And now the robotics facility going down for Naniwa as well. Blink about to finish researching. He might be getting an observer to try and blink up into the main. We'll have to wait and see. But the observer already coming out for Genius. And now Naniwa prodding at the front, but dear oh dear, it looks like Naniwa trying to use a bit of blink micro here, but the fact is he doesn't have anywhere close to enough stalkers to engage this, and it looks like he is going to have to head home. Genius making it away with one of his sentries at stupidly low health in the red there, very very well held by him, and once again, Naniwa coming off not at the better end of that transaction. We do have blink now complete for Genius as well, it's a question of when he decides to show it to Naniwa, and Naniwa is possibly going to try for the aggression again, going to try and blink up the ramp. But will he be able to do this? It looks like Naniwa is going to be blinking back. And soon Genius is going to have an opportunity where he'll be able to blink forward into those stalkers and catch Naniwa by surprise if Naniwa is not careful. So we have the third and fourth gases now being taken from Genius. They are already taken from Naniwa in his expansion. And both sides are going to be going gas heavy as they transition into the later game. Naniwa actually going for two additional gateways and an immortal. So he is determined to make some sort of timing push work. Blink Stalker Immortal, a very, very strong composition. And he is going up to six gateways in his main base. Let's take a look at what Genius is going to be doing. Conversely, we have got the three gates, four gates now being chrono boosted. In fact, four gate Robo Twilight being chrono boosted now uh, from MVP Genius. But he is only on four gates to Naniwa's six. Will that prove to be a deciding factor in the next engagement? Naniwa does have the defender's advantage, and I don't think Genius is going to be able to uh, extend an advantage by blinking up here because the Immortals are now out for Naniwa. I think Genius would be best advised to try and go home and tech up, and the Observer does see the Immortal there, and I think Genius, is he going to be pushing up still? We need to find out. He's going to check what the reinforcement situation is, and it looks like, yep, I think the Observer briefly saw the other one, and he is just running back now. Naniwa knows that the Observer is there, so Genius needs to be a little bit careful with it. And let's find out what he decides to do. Oh, wow, he's going up the ramp at the moment. Blink up! Huge blink up! Gonna try and engage these Blink Stalkers of Naniwa. Two, three, four, five getting picked up. The Immortals, though, now doing an insane amount of damage to the army of Genius, and he is gonna have to blink away. Some of those Stalkers do actually get trapped there, and a Sentry going down as well. I'm not sure how good this has been for Genius, but now trapping some of Naniwa's units on the low ground as well. And it Looks like both of these players being a little bit scrappy here, exchanging a couple of units. That was just a little bit of a small skirmish. So where do we actually stand at the end of that? Let's find out, guys. 48 to 46 probes in favor of Naniwa. Army supply, 45 to 44 in favor of Naniwa. He is 93 supply to 92 supply. This game is basically neck and neck. 
after that beautiful hold of the 4K, Genius had a bit of an advantage, but he hasn't used it quite as well as he would have. And uh, Naniwa's macro behind this has just been superb, as we do now see the Forge, the Robotics Facility, and the Robotics Bay all getting put down at once for MVP Genius. Uh, so we're going to go up to double Robotics Colossus production very, very quickly indeed, whereas Naniwa, I believe, still only has the single Robotics Facility, uh, but he is going to be getting the Robotics Bay at the same time. So Genius is going to have an advantage in Colossus production going into the late game, and because he only had four games instead of six worth of production, he might have a little bit more money to play with as well. Let's find out if that turns out to be crucial going in later on too. Immortals now popping out for MVP. Genius going to try and join his army composition and make sure it is as strong as Naniwa's, and once his Colossi come out, he should be pretty good as well. But Naniwa, very bold move here, going to be going for a third base. Genius is already halfway through his first Colossus, and he has got Double Robot on the way, and oh no! We have Wolf lagging at the moment. Dear, oh dear, oh thank goodness. Oh, okay, good. He didn't actually disconnect. That was all cool from him. And uh, fingers crossed that doesn't happen again in this game. That would be disastrous if it did. But double Colossus production now coming out from Genius. It is clear he wants to go for a two-base timing. And the fact that Naniwa has gone for a third base could prove to be very, very risky for him here. Because this timing push from Genius will inevitably mean he is more Colossi than his opponent. And that could prove to be the deciding factor. We'll have to wait and see. But, oh wow, Genius actually going to be getting a third base of his own now, so I obviously stand corrected there. It looks like we should be okay for the time being a Stalker here from Nani. We're going to be checking the timing on that third base when Genius decides to make it. Does he see the Stalker? No, he does not. So Naniwa will know the timing of this base. He has taken his third as well. As soon as he sees this third, he'll probably feel a little bit more comfy. Oh, never mind. He's just going to blink back and kill the, uh, wow, kill the probe there. And it looks like execution is going to be going on here at the third base as punishment uh, is Naniwa. Now Naniwa thinks that Genius is going to be taking the third. If Genius decides just to push out and use those extra resources for warp, and he has a pylon in the back of the third base, this could be horrific for Naniwa, but he sees the pylon as well. He needs to kill it, and his entire army is getting sent down there now. Uh, if Genius executes his two-base timing, he could be able to take out the third base of Naniwa. Will he be able to do that with superior colossi numbers? We will have to see. But Naniwa now going to be defending his third base. He knows what's coming. MVP Genius is going to be knocking on the front door. There are two Colossi out for Naniwa. Three for Genius. Will the extra Colossus prove to be a huge advantage? Or will it not be enough? We're going to wait and see here. Colossus ripping through all of those Zealots. Uh, Genius just about getting through the a little bit quicker than Naniwa. But Naniwa able to reinforce. Offensive Blinken getting all of the Colossi. And there are still three Colossi alive for Genius. The probes getting pulled from Naniwa in order to hold that attack. But there are more Zealots in the back for MVP Genius. He is going to be able to move in to this base and I think Naniwa just about held that but as soon as Genius comes back he's going to be able to take this third base down the Colossi count is exactly zero now for Naniwa and he has to give up this third base and wow Naniwa actually putting up a stand here I'm not sure I like that with four Colossus out on the field now for MVP Genius those immortals trying to target down the Colossi and in fact he's targeting down the Nexus with the rest of his units he needs to engage the army there we go the immortals now going down for Naniwa and this third base is most definitely toast two immortals and three Colossi still out on the field for Genius and only one Colossus for Naniwa so Genius with a decisive advantage here in this game 112 to 78 supply it looks like Genius might be on the verge now of taking this game back to one all and we're going to be taking this series to an ace match let's wait and see though the Archon being morphed in has been left out in the cold and the offensive link up by the Stalkers and now finally we have the Colossi joining the fray as well. Still only one Colossus versus three. I don't see how Genius could lose this position. Sniping off the Colossus with those Blink Stalkers. Excellent job there. And now still three Colossus to one. Naniwa gets the GG. MVP Genius is going to win game number two and take this game to an ace match, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jarosar. That was an incredible game and I'm so excited to see game number three in this epic PvP series. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this commercial break.